Since the beginning of recorded history, the human race has been at war. First with members of their own family, then their fellow countrymen, and finally nations at large. Yet perhaps the starting ground for all these conflicts lay somewhere deeper within the very character of the human condition, in the dark, untouchable crevices of the human heart. It is said that the first iniquity of free will began even before the maiden pilgrimage from the embryo, preceding the very creation of the earth itself, in the forelife of souls in the heavenly realms. The dawn of warfare, some believe, was initiated by a fallen angel whose trespass against God was pride. In ancient Babylonia, in an age so long ago that the exact millennium remains in question, the Tower of Babel began construction. It was to be the single greatest achievement of the human race. A tower so tall that its summit would reach the heavens and by it prove to the world that their race was superior. It would be God's irony that it would never be finished. Time passed, nations fell, a machine age emerged, and once again the ingenuity of the species which held dominion over all others unveiled what was at the time the most monumental accomplishment ever imagined, the largest machine yet constructed, an automation so mammoth and so revered even before its first demonstration that its only befitting name was Titanic. On April 10th, 1912, it set sail. It was boasted to be the ship that God himself could not sink. It would be God's irony that the very element that was meant to keep it afloat would cause it to sink. Water, frozen water, in the form of an iceberg. Not even one voyage did it complete. And then the next age embarked into the annals of human history. Perhaps the last age the space age. Competition for Victor was unparalleled. Powerful nations spent billions in unabashed rivalry to outdo the other. The Soviet Union launched the first orbiting satellite, the first animal, the first man. They had logged 500% more hours in space than the United States. And in June of 1969, they launched an unmanned probe to the moon to retrieve the first soil sample from another world just one month before Apollo 11. That's how close the race was. Had their unmanned probe not crash-landed into the lunar surface, the first moon rock brought back to Earth would have been by the Soviet Union. Richard Nixon president at the time had this to say about the latest work of the human hand. It is the greatest week since creation, the greatest event since the laying of the foundation of the seas, since the origin of the universe itself, since the design and formation of the delicate human eye through which all these things are perceived, was a flying machine with its two passengers landing on its closest celestial neighbor and returning from where it came. Perhaps again, God's irony lies somewhere within this great boast of humankind. The building of the tallest tower for the sole purpose of standing out among the races was never finished. The machine that was so great that it was said to be untouchable by even God never completed its first voyage. And finally, the crowning achievement of humankind, the greatest boast of the species, the event in human history most associated with pride in our own accomplishments, landing on the moon. Twenty years later, and years behind schedule, the same space program couldn't put into Earth orbit a telescope with a lens that focused. And yet two decades earlier, a mission 100 times more complicated worked on its first occasion. With close scrutiny of the motives of the zealous Nixon administration, a critical examination of the entirely government-controlled press coverage and newly discovered footage of the crew of Apollo 11 staging part of their mission, we wish to detail what may come to be the greatest government conspiracy of all time. A funny thing happened on the way to the moon. Ship. 
We'll have a lovely afternoon Kiss the world goodbye And away we'll fly Destination moon We'll travel fast as a light Till we're out of sight The earth will be like a toy balloon What a thrill you'll get riding on my jet A destination moon We'll go up, 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 up Straight to the moon we two High in the starry blue I'll be out of this world with you So away we'll steal in my space mobile A supersonic a honeymoon Leave your cares below, pull the switch, let's go A destination moon Dr. Von Braun, how would you say we stand in relation to the Russians, and do you think we can ever catch up? I'm convinced that in the space field, the Russians are ahead of us, particularly in uh, large weightlifting capability. And uh, that at the moment, the problem is not so much to catch up, but first build up the working speed that they have already demonstrated. After we are running as fast as they do, there's still a considerable gap to close, and only uh, the future will tell whether we'll manage to close that gap. We cannot and will not ever get into this race as we should, so long as all of our objectives are short-term objectives. We've got to 